Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and for today's viewing pleasure we have a tier 9 battle on the Islands of Ice map starring Zam Ronok in the Japanese tier 9 gunboat destroyer the Kitakaze. Fun fact for you regarding the Kitakaze, a couple of months ago Wargaming were asked in a Q&A session with the developers whether or not they had any plans to nerf the Kitakaze. Wargaming responded, no. Less than a month later, they nerfed the Kitakaze. <laughs> now, since we know that it takes substantially longer than just under a month for a design change to be proposed, discussed, implemented, tested, and then pushed through to live, this tells us one of two things. Either Wargaming were lying, or the people that Wargaming sent along to these Q&A sessions to actually provide the answers to the questions that are being asked don't actually know what they're talking about, not in full possession of the facts, which does kind of make a mockery of the whole Q&A process. To be completely fair here, the Kitakaze probably deserved a bit of a nerf. It's an absolute monster, and it's still an absolute monster even after the 200 meter concealment nerf, because that's all it was. The Kitty still has her eight 100mm guns in four turrets that can rotate from one side to the other and traverse 180 degrees in seconds and spit out shots with a quite frankly terrifying base reload of only three seconds. Despite the relatively weedy low calibre of the guns, they are only 100mm, Japanese gunboat destroyers armed with these 100mm guns enjoy quarter calibre high explosive penetration compared to the 1 6th calibre high explosive penetration that everybody else who isn't German gets. What this means in practice is that most other nations with lowish calibre guns like this, for example the secondary armament on most French battleships and the primary armament on the high tier British destroyers are pretty much incapable of damaging anything unless they take the IFHE skill. Or just get good and learn when to switch to armour piercing, which of course isn't an option for the secondary gun batteries on board French battleships, but is an option for the British high tier destroyers, who despite having guns with a calibre of 113mm actually have less high explosive armour penetration than the Japanese 100mm guns. Not that I'm seriously suggesting that the daring needs a buff, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> the daring's fine. Likewise the Kitakaze is fine, even after the 200m concealment nerf. She is kind of slow though, despite being faster than her predecessor. Actually, we'll talk about that in a moment, because it's kind of weird, but first, you'll note the catapult fighter launched by the Ibuki. The Ibuki being the Japanese Tier 9 heavy cruiser, notoriously fragile ship, but with high damage per minute, and armed with some pretty dangerous torpedoes. Smoke up, switch to the armor piercing, since the Ibuki's given a nice flat broadside, and... Hmm. Well, the Seattle's running his hydro. He's obviously expecting torpedoes, because I can't think of a single other reason why the Ibuki would do that. But if he'd launched torpedoes, we would have seen them by now. So, first blood to Zam, who... Actually, this is a lot stranger than it may first appear. Because in the current game meta, with the Deadeye skill basically, rightly or wrongly, dominating battleship tactics and convincing them all that their rightful place is at the back of the map, Cruisers like the Ibuki actually fit quite nicely into that meta, because the Ibuki has always been a very fragile ship. It's never been the kind of ship that leads the charge from the front. It gets citadeled as soon as anything so much as looks at it. It has limited utility. It doesn't have radar. It can have hydro, but it has to give up defensive AA in order to take it. But what the Ibuki has always been good at is raining down high explosive death and destruction at a nice comfortable range of anything up to 165 kilometers, the kind of range where it's far enough away to be able to manoeuvre out of the way of any incoming return fire. Or in other words, the exact opposite of what you just saw that it would be doing, despite the fact that the game meta has shifted to accommodate exactly that kind of gameplay. Instead, as a top tier heavy cruiser, he decided that it was a far better idea to just rush forward to within shouting distance of an enemy smokescreen and not launch torpedoes into it. Although I do keep banging on about this new battleship meta where they all hang around the back of the map sniping at long range, but the Minnesota over there doesn't appear to have read that particular memo. Which is going to be extremely bad news for him. 
Speaking of people who don't appear to have read their memos, what's the York doing? I mean, it's not quite as blatantly suicidal as what we saw the Ibuki just do, but still, that's not going to be good for his health. He's fired torpedoes, hasn't he? There are going to be torpedoes coming between the gap in between those two icebergs. There they are. And he's dead too, <laughs> so... <laughs> Was it worth it? Are the torpedoes going to hit anything? Uh, no, they're not. Well, on the plus side, the York at least remembered to fire his torpedoes, but he may as well have not bothered because they had exactly the same result as the torpedoes that the Ibuki didn't fire. None whatsoever. This cap is where all of the action is happening. Cap A is under control of the enemy team. Cap B is under the control of Zam's team. Wait, what's the Akazuki doing? <laughs> What is going on here? There's the Akazuki's torpedoes. He launched them way too early. They're not going to hit anything. He should have launched them from there. Then he might have stood an actual chance of hitting anything on the other side of this island. Wait, did one of them perhaps hit the Missouri? Possibly. Was it worth it? Let's see what happened. No, he's dead too. <laughs> Well, okay. Um, yeah. Now, what price that poor old Minnesota, who, against all of the odds, pushed up in order to support his cruisers and destroyers? <laughs> oh, wait, no. He's not completely alone. There is still a Black Edition Jean Bart over there. The Minnesota, who can quite clearly see the writing on the wall, has turned around and is attempting to get the hell out of here. The only problem with that plan is he's in the Minnesota. <laughs> um, he's got no chance. None whatsoever. Oh, he did manage to get some good shots in on the Fiji. Couldn't finish the job, knocked his engine out, but the Fiji's safe behind the island. But the Minnesota is so slow. He's never going to get out of here alive. The Jean Bart, on the other hand, is quick enough to get out of here alive. But he's not doing it. Well, that's going to be his funeral. Smoke screen up. Armour piercing. Since he's got a flat broadside to shoot at, the Jean Bart isn't the best on the battleship in the world, and oh, that's unfortunate, because he was actually the one spotting the Jean Bart. Wait, no. No, we've got it. Now that the Jean Bart is inching forward, despite the fact that Zam is spotted, the Jean Bart's main battery guns don't actually have a shot. So the only thing that Zam has to worry about are the rear turrets from the Minnesota, and he's good, and the secondary turrets on the Jean Bart, which are all at the back, but mostly consist of 100mm guns and can't actually penetrate the Kitakazi's armour. Not that the Kitakazi is particularly well armoured, of course, and oops, there goes the Minnesota, as predicted. Uh, it's not particularly well armoured, it's a destroyer, and it's not a Russian destroyer. It's just that 100mm high explosive shells can't penetrate shit. Unless they're Japanese or German. Neither of which applies to the Jean Bart. The Jean Bart does have a couple of 152mm secondaries, but uh, those aren't going to save it. It's the last thing left alive over here, and just look at what's coming around both sides of this island. So, downsides to the Kitakazi. Fairly weak torpedo armament. I mean, the torpedoes hit hard, but it only has one launcher. It does, however, have a torpedo reload booster, which Zam is almost certainly not actually going to need here. Let's see how much damage he takes from the Jean Bart secondaries, which are the only things that can shoot at him. There go the 152mm turrets. Some damage taken, not nearly enough. And there's kill number four. Five enemy ships sunk, Zam responsible for four of them. And this side of the map, is now a very target-poor environment. So, while Zam is plodding along at his best speed of just over 38 knots with the speed flag, because, well, the Kitakazi is many things, but fast is not one of them, I want to draw your attention to the mini-map. I've also rewound the clock about a minute, just so you can pay attention to the friendly, top-tier battleship, the Sovetsky Soyuz, in Cap Circle Bravo, who is perfectly positioned behind an island to fight a delaying action and hold off the enemy team while the rest of our team gets over there 
to give him some backup and support. So naturally, that's exactly what he's not doing. He can't even claim ignorance of what was on the other side of that island as far as the enemy team's composition was concerned because he just launched a spotter plane and detected everything on the other side of the island. So instead of staying in cover and waiting for the team to finish off the Jean Bart, which they've just done, finish capping Charlie, which they are doing, and get their asses over here, he's coming out from behind cover in order to take on a Missouri in a head-on pass. Which of course is opening him up to crossfire from not just the Oyster Yachtland to the south, but also the New Orleans to the north. And actually, come to think of it, probably also the Baltimore organiser now, and a Margie up to the north as well, because right now, they've got nothing else to shoot at. But perhaps there's a method to the Sovetsky Soyuz's madness. Perhaps he's low on health, he knows he's about to die anyway, and he's determined to take the Missouri with him, because that would be a decent trade. Tier 9 battleship for a Tier 9 battleship. Except if that was his plan, he's completely screwed that one up. He's managed to not ram or sink the Missouri with his guns. He has managed to take out the New Orleans, but then the Missouri finishes him. So he had the opportunity to ram the Missouri and trade a Tier 9 battleship for a Tier 9 battleship, and instead he traded a Tier 9 battleship for a Tier 7 cruiser. None of which he needed to do if he just stayed where he was. Basically, the Sovetsky Soyuz had three possible choices. Stay where he was behind the island. If he'd done that, he'd still be alive, and he'd be contesting the cap so that the enemy team wouldn't be able to flip it. Back off to behind the third island, over to the east in Cap Circle Bravo. If he'd done that, he'd still be alive, and he'd be contesting the cap so that the enemy team wouldn't be able to flip it, and he'd be closer to backup and support. Or decide, no, nah, it'll be fine, charge forward so that everybody can shoot at you and end up trading for a Tier 7 cruiser. Basically, he could have blindfolded himself and just randomly picked one of those three choices and still had a 66% chance of getting it right. Meanwhile, Zam is baiting out the Missouri's radar. There it is. To be completely fair to the Sovetsky Soyuz, we don't know how much damage he actually inflicted on that Missouri. He doesn't have a lot of help. It's entirely possible, in fact entirely probable, that most of the damage suffered by the Missouri there was at the hands of the Sovetsky Soyuz. So, yeah, let's not be too harsh, but still. He definitely had options that probably would have kept him alive until Zam and the rest of his team could have turned up. And another thing. I don't really want to be too critical on a battleship that does decide to push forward and support the rest of the team. I mean, I'm assuming that's what the Sovetsky Soyuz did. I don't have any evidence to the contrary, and it's refreshing to see in this day and age. In fact, we're seeing a lot of stuff that's going against the supposed new game meta in this battle. As Zam pushes up now that the Missouri's radar has expired, he successfully managed to bait him into using the radar early, and mostly unsuccessfully. Because we are seeing a lot of battleships not doing what they're suddenly supposed to be doing in the Dead Eye Age, pushing up and dying. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. Hang on. Missouri versus Missouri. Are they going for a ram? Under the circumstances, they both should be trying to ram each other here. I mean, sure, try to take each other out with guns, but keep moving forward because if that fails... A ram might be the best thing that you can expect to achieve, and nope, the Seattle took the enemy Missouri out, but the friendly Missouri is on very, very low health. Enemy hoist the Yachtland spotted. Friendly Missouri fires up his radar. It's not going to last long though, because he's been taken out, but the radar did last long enough to let us know that the Oyster Yachtland was bailing out which under the circumstances is definitely the right thing for him to be doing because he's done what he needed to do, he's flipped that central cap and he does not want to be caught in there with Zam's entire team about to steamroller their way through it. Led of course by Zam himself who's just about to slip over the border into that cap circle and undo anything good that the Oyster Yachtland just achieved and he's spotted. Oh, that can only be the Shiratsuyu, it's the only thing left on the enemy team that can outspot him. The good news is that he's capping uncontested, which means that the Shiratsuyu is quite probably, yep, there are some torpedoes, lurking around outside the cap circle, trying to ambush anybody who comes in here to cap. Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear, he managed to get himself spotted. Well, he sat there waiting for the Seattle to get close enough to radar him before he decided to move. Either way, that's a serious error of judgement on the part of the Shiratsuyu, and a Kraken Unleashed on the part of Zam here. 
They now outnumber the surviving enemy ships by more than two to one. They have a commanding 400 point lead and with the removal of the Shiratsuyu, the single greatest threat to Zam's continued existence has been removed. It was the only ship on the enemy team that was capable of outspotting him. The Osteyotland could conceivably take him out in a gunfight if he manages to get the drop on him and get a couple of opening salvos off, but well, Kitakaze is entirely capable of taking out an Osteyotland as well. As for the two enemy battleships, the Tier 7 Gneisenau and the Tier 8 Amagi, I'm not 100% sure, it has been a while. I mean, I've been retired from the Navy for more than 10 years now, but if I struggle to remember, I think the correct naval terminology for the situation in which they both now find themselves is proper fucked. <laughs> oh, he's definitely going to catch the Amagi with one of those torpedoes. They've probably only just seen them now. Yep, one torpedo. Well, shame it wasn't more, but well... You miss 100% of the torpedoes that you don't launch, so he's damage controlled because he did cause a flood, but the damage counter isn't ticking up, so uh, time to get a fire set, I suppose. Oh, so the Yachtland was spotted over there as well, so that's good to know. So we can get a fire set. Oh, and there's the Confederate Award to go with the First Blood and Kraken Unleashed. And come on. There's the fire, and that means the Amagi is now dead. There's nothing you can do about that other than try to outheal the incoming damage. But he's also getting pelted with 100mm high explosive, so the chances of him surviving this are somewhere between zero and jack squat. And there's kill number six. Only 133,000 damage. I mean, it's not like he's been kill stealing or anything, but, well, two of the kills were enemy destroyers, and they don't have a huge amount of health to begin with. The Gneiser now is... yeah. <laughs> He's not surviving this either. And that just means that the Oyster Yachtland is around here somewhere. And he is not going to outspot Zam Ronak. Poor concealment is one of the defining characteristics of the pan-European destroyers. And there he is. Oh, and he does not have a lot of health left. Is he going to try and make a fight of it? Or is he just going to try to run? Well, he's not going to run very far with his engine knocked out. And that, kids, is kill number seven. Zambronic in the Kitakaze, the Tier 9 monstrously good Japanese destroyer that Wargaming promised they weren't going to nerf and then less than a month later went ahead and nerfed anyway. But it doesn't really seem to have made that much of a difference. This is still a frighteningly good Tier 9 destroyer. Absolutely cleaning up here in this Tier 9 battle on the Islands of Ice map, a match in which the battleships on both teams don't appear to have bothered reading the memo that in the Age of the Dead Eye skill they're supposed to be cruising the map border sniping everybody at long range. Although, looking at what happened to the battleships in this match, perhaps they should have. I don't know. You be the judge. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.